Welcome back, everyone. We're here today on our Total Wellness Tuesday episode of the week, episode 2391. I would love you to check out that page for all of today's show notes and three big takeaways for the day, as well as any other pertinent research links you may want to dive deeper into. So today I want to answer the question because it does float around the internet. Does iodine intake damage your thyroid or increase Hashimoto's disease. So once we use the word disease, I have to give you my disclaimer, which is I'm not here to provide you with any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, or medical advice of any type and diagnosis. All right. So now that we said that, we can get into today's show. So here is some big takeaways. The current dogma of the day, and remember the day continues to change, right? So diets and nutrition and supplementation and this, that, and the other thing are always changing. But remember, foundational health never changes. And we always talk about foundational health. So let's um, look at a few things. The first is this, that iodine is one of the, so iodine's a mineral. And so if we look at iodine, iodine deficiency is one of the major causes of low thyroid around the world. All right, so we're gonna break this into two classes. Your, your thyroid needs iodine in order to make thyroid hormone, right? So if we're talking about T3 and before that T4, if we're talking about making thyroid hormone and having a good, healthy, strong metabolism, so metabolism, no more dry skin, no more brain fog, no more puffiness, no more water retention, no more thinning hair, no more high cholesterol, because low thyroid could cause all of these particular things. So again, it's not the only reason for the things that I named, but it certainly plays a role in it. So the number one, so the biggest cause of low thyroid is low iodine, right? So we have to just keep in mind, like let's take everything with a grain of salt here, right? So if you have low thyroid, okay, hypothyroidism, which means you have a TSH above a two. I know in conventional medicine, they like to say three is okay, four is okay, up to five is okay. Well, it's okay, but it's suboptimal, which means you may be dealing with brain fog, low mood, low energy, high cholesterol, dry skin, thinning hair, loss of the outer third of the eyebrow. Like these are all things that correlate with low thyroid. Okay. So let's, that's, that is a, that's proven without a doubt. That is science, right? You can get your iodine from food-based sources. If you like um, things with higher iodine, I'm not going to get into those today because <clears throat> excuse me, I have an entire section of my podcast just on thyroid, literally probably like 30 shows just on thyroid. I'm going to link those up for you today. I'm going to make it really easy. Everything will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2391. I also have a full course just on rebalancing your thyroid. I'm telling you right now, if anything is wrong with your thyroid, you're able to fix it as long as you still have a thyroid because some people don't. They've had it radiated. They've had it removed, all sorts of different things. If you have a thyroid, I've seen it be able to be rebalanced, okay? And that includes you. So, and I like to state that because some people think that they're not able to and I, like, I was that person before, like, oh, other people can get well, but I can't. What well, you can, I'm telling you right now, don't give up on yourself. You can get well. This goes for anything. We're looking at a microcosm today of the greater macrocosm. Microcosm is uh, just bad information online. Macrocosm, instead of it being thyroid, it could be any dis-ease of the body. Okay, so we know that iodine is needed in order to make thyroid hormone. All right, so where's then the controversy? The controversy is, if you take in iodine, does it increase Hashimoto's? Now, let's first discuss what Hashimoto's is. Autoimmune disease. That's what it is. Okay, so it's an autoimmune disease of your thyroid. So what, what, is, auto, what is an autoimmune disease? Well, there's a genetic predisposition to it. However, that does not mean you ever have to get it. So the genetic predisposition, I talk about this in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, right? So there's a genetic component, because if you don't have the genetic component, something else is going to go wrong in your genetics, not that thing, right? Like it's unlikely, almost impossible for me to ever have Hashimoto's. Nobody in my family has it. It's not in our genetic line. When we get an autoimmune issue, here's what happens. Rheumatoid arthritis, right? That, that's what happens. So that's what it, all four of my grandparents had, and that's what both my parents had. So we have to understand that our genetics do play a factor. However, I had the beginning of rheumatoid arthritis at 17 years old, 18 years old, 19 years old. How did I get rid of it? Well, I have the same genetics, right? And now I don't have it today. I got rid of it by rebalancing what was wrong with my body. 
right? What filled up my rain barrel? It's no different than any other autoimmune issue. Hashimoto's is not different than rheumatoid. It's only different in the symptoms. That's really it. The underlying root cause might be different, maybe, but it's different in the symptomatology, right? So that's, that's the difference. But, okay, so there's an underlying predilection or predisposition, <clears throat> excuse me, to Hashimoto's. All right, so now is an autoimmune issue. So that means that your immune system is attacking self, right? Autoimmune, it's attacking itself. All right, it doesn't do that by accident. As much as conventional medicine, they don't even say that anymore. They used to say that, but again, conventional medicine changes its tune and what happens? Well, it always goes back to what we've already known for 6,000 years in Ayurvedic medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, go back to any natural form of medicine. The immune system's not messing up. It messes up, right? It becomes imbalanced because of an underlying root cause. 90% of all autoimmune issues have at least gut dysfunction with one of its primary issues for there to be an autoimmune issue. There's heavy metals, there's viruses, there's inflammation from any number of things, right? So these things are, these all things all matter, infections, bacteria, et cetera. Okay, so now you have an autoimmune issue, it's Hashimoto's, and you take in iodine, and it's said to do what? Well, it's said to increase antibodies. It's said to specifically increase TPO antibodies, and why is that important? Because when you are measuring for Hashimoto's, you're actually measuring those TPO antibodies. Okay, so here's what I can share with you. This is really important. It's called thyroid peroxidase production or thyroid peroxidase as, as we're looking at the specific um, uh, autoimmune issue with those antibodies. So what I want to share with you is this. We've run at least, I mean, I don't know how many, but just of the stress mood and metabolism test, which looks at your thyroid, your cortisol levels, your uh, sex hormones, your vitamin D, your blood sugar, like all of those things matter when you're assessing hormones because hormones don't live in isolation as much as your endocrinologist likes to tell you, oh, we're just gonna run TSH. Well, that gives you almost nothing except for how much thyroid is being produced at that one minute in time when you have your blood drawn. That's it. Like literally, and if you have your blood drawn later in the afternoon, all right, well, your TPO, or I mean, your um, TSH is probably going to be on the lower side, like better than it should look in the, in the morning, right? So you want to really test your thyroid in the morning when you wake up. Like that's it. That's when you want to test these things. So at-home lab testing is way more convenient, easier to do, and you actually get um, to see if these things are happening. All right, so say you believe the dogma of the day that iodine increases TPO antibodies. All right, well, here's the thing. You want your antibodies below a 50 on the stress mood metabolism test. So if you are using something like the daily thyroid support or you're eating your seaweed snacks or your nori crinkles or whatever it is that you're doing for your iodine, all right, and you test your uh, antibody levels for your Hashimoto's and it doesn't increase, iodine is not increasing TPO. That's what we see the majority of the time. That's literally what we see the majority of the time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say though, there are some exceptions, right? So there are some exceptions. And oftentimes, though, it's based on the amount of iodine you're taking in. So iodine, your body's going to use, if it's in its natural form, potassium iodine, iodine from, again, seaweed, whatever it might be, you're going you're to produce a natural amount. You're not going to overproduce, okay? But some people are taking, instead of micrograms per day, 200, 400 micrograms of iodine, they're taking in milligrams of iodine. They're taking in quite a bit of iodine. Why is this important? The reason why this is important is because, like anything, even vitamin D, a little is good, but a boatload is not, right? So when people take 100,000 IUs of vitamin D or 50,000 IUs of vitamin D, that's not how you would get it. That's not how you would synthesize it in nature. You don't want to take that much. Just because it's convenient to take it once a week, which is what MDs tell their patients to do, no. You want to take a little every day instead of a whole lot all at once so that you don't get the hypercalcification of the arteries. You don't get the calcium being pulled from the bones. But again, people lump in two to 4,000 IUs a day with 50,000 a week. No, the research does not show that the 2,000 is bad, the 4,000 is bad. They show that the 100,000 the 300,000, I, I did the research on this five, six years ago. So again, we have to understand that it's also the dosage. So anything good, it could be bad. 
right? We want to understand that. That's the same with coffee. It's the same with teas. It's the same with broccoli. If you eat two pounds of broccoli, you're probably not going to be feeling very well. Like that's going to be really hard on the digestive system. All right. So again, think micrograms of iodine, not milligrams of iodine. So it goes basically grams, milligrams, micrograms. Micrograms are the smaller amount. Okay. Now let me read you the research though. So here's the research. Um, Although iodine deficiency is the major cause of hypothyroidism worldwide, so basically they're saying not enough iodine causes low thyroid. All right. Autoimmune thyroiditis, Hashimoto's, is the primary cause in the United States and westernized countries. Some concerns has been raised about supplementing iodine in individuals with Hashimoto's as it can stimulate thyroid peroxidized production, which in turn triggers an increase in TPO antibodies and potentially an autoimmune flare-up. That research was done in 2021. However, a 2021 review of the literature, so again, over the last year, a review of the literature suggests that the increase in TPO and TPO antibodies that may occur with a recommended iodine intake of 150, looking at micrograms, is likely transient and may not be clinically significant, especially in those with stable iodine status. Research, so again, it just goes back and, and shows that most likely a whole lot was made about nothing where correlations were made without actual causation. And I want to share with you because in natural health, we know that it's not about a silver bullet. Everybody's looking for, just take some iodine and your thyroid will be healed. No, no, no. Uh, again, I go through this. It's all free in the podcast. And then if you want, I have an in-depth course on it as well. And you can run a stress mood and metabolism and get your own plan. Whatever works for you. There's free, there's study on your own, or there's kind of done for you. But it's your choice. You can work with a naturopathic doctor. You can they have to specialize in, again, this, these types of things. You can work with an integrative health practitioner that specializes in this. But there are answers. And that's because iodine doesn't work in isolation. So these people with Hashimoto's, they might be taking iodine on its own saying, hey, I need to boost my low thyroid. Makes sense. I get it. I understand why they're doing this. But you know what? They have selenium deficiency. Because selenium deficiency is almost as common, right, from a functional perspective as iodine deficiency. So here's what happens. You're taking in the iodine. You're not going to get the conversion to active, usable iodine, T3, right? So why does that matter? Because if you don't have selenium, you don't have enough zinc, you don't have enough vitamin B6 because your body's worn out, it's stressed out, it's using antioxidants to fight inflammation or whatever it might be, you can't convert it to usable thyroid. So that's why using a single bullet approach, a single solution approach such as iodine, it's not going to help. You have to look at the body as a synergy. It doesn't work with one thing. It works in synergies. And so that is why when you use iodine with selenium, with zinc, with these other cofactors, you get the best results. Now, we use daily thyroid support. We use that with daily nutritional support and other things as well. You know, omega-3s are very helpful. There's other things that are helpful. That's what we do. But at the same time, again, I want to really try to stress this, that that does not fix the autoimmune issues. And again, I'm, I'm always sharing with you the truth. That helps boost thyroid, okay? However, that does not help with the autoimmune issue. The autoimmune issue, you need to figure out what the underlying root cause is. Test for your heavy metals. Test for your gut dysfunction. Look at your high levels of omega-6s. Look at all these issues that might be causing your autoimmune imbalance. Look at it from an underlying root cause. I recommend running the big five, but it's your choice. You might run just the starter kit, right? It's a little less expensive to do that. It's your choice. But the, the, I wanted to share this with you here today because there's just, there's too much. I know that health, a lot of health practitioners online are not trying to do you wrong. I really believe that. But they're sharing marketed marketing-based solutions. They're sharing just silver bullet, single solution. Do this and you fix everything. Oh, don't do this because they're being contrarians. It's the same thing with certain vitamins and minerals. They're just being contrarians and they're not helping anybody. So if you're a health practitioner and you're constantly just pointing out what, uh, like there's a falsity in this, there's a falsity in this, you can find a falsity in anything, like literally anything. That's not helping anybody. You might be building your social media following, but that's not helping the world. I really want people to rethink if you're in this profession or any profession that you're trying to give answers and solutions, that you're trying to build people up rather than just break everything down into chaos. It doesn't serve any good. So hopefully today's podcast was helpful. I hope it answers the question, is iodine hurting your thyroid or causing higher levels of Hashimoto's? Well, first, you can actually tell, right? 
Like if you have Hashimoto's, first of all, I'd find the underlying root cause. But second is if you're taking something with iodine, don't use too much. And the next thing is you can lab test right at home and find out, is it increasing TBO antibodies? If the answer is yes, just make sure you didn't change multiple variables. And if you didn't, well, then decrease. And if, if it did increase it, right, your TBO antibodies. But if it didn't, it's not an issue. And if you're taking it with selenium and the B6 and the zinc, it's most likely going to help. That's what I've seen, again, as a clinician. Not someone who just reads the research. I love the research. But seeing it every day in my practice, overseeing a team of 17 health people, right? Health coaches. So again, I wanted to share that with you. Sometimes I get a little bit more fiery than other times. That's my pizza-based personality, my Aries-based my Aries -based, uh, birth sign here. But you have to understand is that I, I want the best for you. I want the best for this industry. And I think we need to provide the nuances around these you know, sensationalized headlines. All right. So hopefully today's podcast was helpful. Uh, thank you so much. As always, if it was, please do feel free to share it with anybody else you believe could serve. Take care, everybody.